Hello again, everybody. Um, so, I have decided to finally put out a video that I said I was going to do a long time ago. Um, over a year ago, actually. Uh, and figured it's time to finally get to it. Let's put it out. Um, uh, this video is um, it's primarily a how-to guide to take care of your dog or your dogs if they happen to get parvo. Um, what happened was within one month uh, both of my dogs ended up getting parvo and my one dog Spaz got parvo first and then two weeks later my other dog Sadie ended up having it as well. And you know there there is a way to do it because pretty much if you have a dog other than a puppy that ends up getting parvo, what ends up killing them is not necessarily the virus itself. What happens is the virus causes dehydration, severe dehydration, and the lack of electrolytes ends up dehydrating the dog so much that the organs pretty much shut down and they die of dehydration. And, um... This is from what the parvovirus does to the dog. Now I'm going to start off this video. I'm sure you probably stumbled upon it because your dog has parvo or you suspect they have parvo and, you know, you're trying to figure out what to do. You know, and there's nothing wrong with that. And I'll explain why. You know, everybody, you know, that doesn't have to endure a dog going through parvo will immediately say, well, if you don't have the money to take your dog to the vet and do whatever is necessary, then you shouldn't have an animal. And, you know, here's the thing. I know people who are loaded with cash, who still, you know, you, just because you have money doesn't mean that you should just throw it out at anything. There is a way for you to try to be able to take care of your dog at home. In the end, though, if it gets to a point where you need to take your dog to the vet, take them to the vet. You know, they will work out a payment plan with you. They're not going to turn you away and let your dog die because you can't fork out hundreds of dollars, if not more, right when the dog needs help. You can tell them, I want to save my dog but I can't give you all the money right now. Can we work out a payment plan and I'll eventually take care of it? What matters is the dog. You know, you wouldn't be looking for a video on how to take care of your animal if that was not the case. So, you know, there, there are two main things here though. Don't watch this thinking that everything's gonna be okay and this video is going to save your dog. You know, this is going to help you try to counteract what happens to your dog you know, and if you're able to, you know, use this video to help you manage your dog's care so that they get through the two to three day process of eliminating the parvovirus, then that's fantastic. But I'll give you some definite warning signs that if it gets to that point, do what's best for your dog. You know, put yourself in the animal's shoes. If you were knocking on death's door, wouldn't you want your owner, you know, you, the person you love, to take you to make sure that you survive? You know, so if, if you get to the point where any of the warning signs that I give you become extremely apparent, then just take the dog. Work out a payment plan. You know, if anything, I'm sure I'm going to have quite a few people watching this video because I realized when my dogs had Parvo... There really is not that many, like, how to take care of your dog with Parvo videos. It's more or less a bunch of veterinarians saying, this is what it is. So, you know, if, if that becomes a case, you know, I'm sure that you could put something in the comments, like, I couldn't maintain the dog and I took it to the vet. You know, open a GoFundMe if you are that hard up for cash. See if you can get people to help. You know, because I've been through the process. I know that it's a horrible thing to deal with. Um, with Spaz, I actually wasn't as shaky as I was with Sadie. With Sadie, I actually got to a point where I was like, my goodness, I, I don't know if this dog's going to make it through it. But, 
you know, I know it, it's a difficult thing. So if I if I saw somebody who said that they they realized that their dog wasn't going to make it and they took the dog to the vet, and they're hoping that somebody would help with bills, open a GoFundMe, see if people throw ten or twenty bucks your way, something. But don't let your dog die just because you're afraid of making a few payments. Please do not let that happen. You know, figure something out. The second thing that I want to definitely put down right now is there is a difference between puppies and older dogs when it comes to parvovirus. It affects puppies differently and it actually will go after the heart. So if you have a puppy, I would say anything under a year and a half year, you know, one and a half years old, just get it to the vet. Because what I'm going to tell you is not going to work for a puppy. It is going to work for a dog probably a year and a half, two years older. But if you have a puppy, this is do or die. You know, get them to the vet. Please, get them to the vet. This video is for people who have a dog that is about a year and a half or two years older. You know, they're a mature dog. And you've pretty much seen the warning signs and you know that your dog has parvovirus. This is going to help you do the best that you can to get them through it and it might make it a breeze. Once I figured out a regimen, it actually was kind of a breeze taking care of my dogs with parvo. It was just messy, you know, in making sure that I took care of them, okay? So, you know, remember that. If it gets to the point where a steward died, please take them to the vet. You know, just do it and figure something out. But if you have a dog that is still in its puppy stage, just do it now. Get them to the vet. You know, it's detrimental at this point, okay? All right, so I'm gonna move on. Okay, so first thing, I have two dogs. I have um, Spaz, who is, he's right here on the bed. Spaz a butt. Hey, that's Spaz. He is a pug and boxer mix. And then Sadie. Sadie. Hey. Sleepy girl. That's Sadie. She is a Labrador and uh, Rhodesian Ridgeback mix. Spaz is uh, about, he's just over seven years old. I had him since he was a puppy. And Sadie is, I'm, we think that she's about eight. Uh, she lived with my aunt and uncle in Detroit for a long time, and they ended up having to move into a smaller home. So when my cousin came down to uh, Florida for a road trip, she brought Sadie with her. And we're guessing she's about eight. Um, when all of this happened, it was a year ago in November, so um, Spaz was six, and Sadie was about seven. Um, she's getting towards the old, her older years, you know, and she's probably going to go eight to nine years and she'll probably be done. She has some joint issues and everything. Spaz, on the other hand, is probably, the vet said, about 13, 14 years. So he was really like right in the middle of his life when he got it. And, sorry, I have an itch on my nose. Um, the thing with Spaz is that he's a very, very healthy, happy dog. And the first warning sign with him was that he, he he threw up and I was like oh no you know you don't feel good and you know he threw up his food um, twice and I was like you know what's wrong and then he threw up you know he drank a bunch of water and he threw that up and then he started having the nostalgic parvo poops and you know what I'm talking about. They are they are definitely infamous. They are reddish brown, mostly red, mucusy, and they have that rancid chemical smell to them. That's the parvo smell. The reason they're mucusy is because what the parvo virus does is it gets ingested somehow and it attacks the digestive system and it makes them shed the lining of their intestines which is why they're well, you know when you shed the lining of your intestine your intestine bleeds and um, you know the mucus is the lining coming out and you get severely severely dehydrated and it's just a very very bad digestive upset to them and once the lining of the intestine is completely shed that's when the parvovirus has been eliminated from the dog and it takes about two to three days. Well, when Spaz was going through this, 
he actually did not seem that bad. I mean, he was tired, but he really wasn't that bad. And he actually got through it very well. The only thing that I did for him was I, you know, I tried to push water on him, but I realized that his stomach was so upset that he couldn't get it down. So I ended up getting, um, I got some Pedialyte and the non-flavored, get the non-flavored Pedialyte or the generic version of that from Walmart or Target. And I have this little, you can get this with like children's Benadryl or something like that. It's just a little syringe thing, it doesn't have a needle, but you know, I filled that up and I would put it in the corner of his mouth inside his cheek and squirt it in there and he would kind of suck it down a little bit. But then also I got these and these were lifesavers. Um, they're pink bismuth caplets and they are technically, it's Pepto-Bismol, but it's the caplet pill form and because the minty thick liquid of Pepto-Bismol is, it's not very good to dogs. Dogs do not get it down very well. It doesn't stay down. It doesn't taste good to them at all. It normally will make them throw up more. So these are Pepto-Bismol tablets. And I would what I would do is I would give him one of these, like, I'd give it to him at like 11 o'clock in the morning and then one more at like 8 o'clock at night. And I would put it in a spoonful of Cool Whip, you know, and I would put it in there. And he would, you know, like, oh, cool it, because, you know, he loves it. Don't give them, like, anything dairy really is not good for your dogs, but that was just, it was easy to get down and pretty easy for him to digest. Don't give him anything heavy like um, cheese or anything like that. Try not to give them something that's going to really upset their stomach. But for some reason, light Cool Whip is, like, the freezer kind is really light on a dog's stomach. So anyway, I would put one of these in there, he would just whoop, swallow it down, and in about half an hour he felt good enough that he would start drinking water. And he went through it like a champ. Like, before I knew it, he was done. It was just trying to keep up with the poops. You know, they can't help it. And when your dog is sick with Parvo, don't ever spank them or yell at them or hit them or anything like that. Discipline them in any way for going to the bathroom inside. I don't know if anybody has ever had C. diff. Um, it's a bacterial infection, and humans get it, and my god, it is horrible. And this is the canine equ equivalent of human C. diff. You can't control it. You know, my entire household got it way back when I used to work in a nursing home in Michigan, and, like, we had full-grown adults who were accidentally shitting their beds because... It's so bad. You can't control it. And this is, your dog is the same way. He can't control it. So don't discipline your dog for pooping inside on accident. They're not trying to do it. It's just impossible to not do. You know, so don't do that. So anyway, Spaz got through it really well. Now Sadie, on the other hand, about two weeks later, she threw up. And I was like, okay, hopefully it's just an upset stomach. No. About five hours later, Everybody was sleeping in the bedroom, and next thing I know, I can just smell that nasty parvo diarrhea smell. And I'm like, oh no. Here we go. Sadie's got parvo. This is going to be a lot bigger of a deal because she's older, and this is going to take a, a big toll on her. So, um,. You know, the first thing I did, you know, is uh, tried to get her some water, tried to push water on her, and she just, she was having nothing of it. She wanted to put nothing in her mouth, you know, and I was like, oh, oh boy, here we go. So just kind of let her sleep. I let her sleep for about seven or eight hours and then tried to, like, get her excited about something. And it was not happening. She was just almost completely out of it. So I was like, oh, okay, here we go. We're going to have some issues. So let's get into exactly what I did for Sadie because she was, she was a close call case, but I'll, ex I'll explain all of that. Okay. So with Sadie, it was very, it was, it was touch and go at some point. I was scared to death for her and, you know, there's, there's one tell-all with your dog. You have 
pretty much gotten them to the point where they're too dehydrated. When you you grab them behind the shoulders and kind of pinch their, not hard, just kind of pinch and pull a little bit that, that skin there. And what you're looking for when you kind of grab it and pull it up a little bit, you're looking for it to go back and kind of just return to the way it was. You can tell that they're extremely dehydrated is when you do that, it will take a lot longer for it to go back to its normal shape. If you grab it and kind of crinkle it up and pull it up and it just kind of stays there and slowly goes back down, they are extremely dehydrated. It's time to take them to the vet. But if it still is pretty much meh, it goes back, you know, they're very dehydrated or they're very hydrated at that point, okay? So that's a really good way to gauge. You know, also, as long as they're responsive, try to say something to them and get them to respond. You know, like, uh, you know, you want to go potty, you want to go outside, uh, you want to treat, anything like that. And as long as they, res like, look at you and respond or maybe get a little bit excited, they're okay. But once they get to the point where they're pretty much non-responsive, they can't really move, that, you know, you can tell that they're super dehydrated because you, you pinch that skin together, it's crunch time, you know. Um, so she was still pretty responsive and her her skin was, it was going back pretty fast. So I knew that she wasn't super dehydrated, but you could tell she could, she was, she was feeling horrible. So I did the Cool Whip, light Cool Whip, and I gave her one of these, and um, the the Pink Bismuth Capless, I would give her one of these, and within about half an hour, she seemed a lot better. It helped with her intestines, and her stomach felt better, I could get her to actually drink water, and all of that. And normally she would do it on her own. And then also with this, I cannot find the bottle for some reason, but they have anti-diarrheal tablets, and they're very small. They're about that big, super skinny, and they're just called anti-diarrheal um, caplets that humans take. And I would give her one of those as well, because that helps the body from pulling all of the, the water from her body and putting it into her intestines for diarrhea, it would stop that from happening so much so she wasn't losing all of her hydration super fast. And that helped her a lot too. So I gave her one of these, one of the anti-diarrheals, and then um, probably about 30 minutes later when I knew that the, the bismuth, the, the Pepto-Bismol caplets had kicked in, I would give her probably five or six of these syringe bowls of the non-flavored Pedialyte in the side of her mouth to rehydrate her and put a whole bunch of electrolytes back into her body. After doing that for about 10 hours, you know, off and on, she was a million times better. You know, she was actually happy. She would get on the floor and kind of pull herself around a little bit and then she would grab a toy and like she was feeling much better because she was getting rehydrated and I had stopped most of the the body pulling the the water into her intestines and all of that so she started doing amazingly and you know that's what you got to do you have to take it upon yourself to hydrate your dog give them the electrolytes make their stomach not feel so crappy so that they can drink something put something into their body do not force food on your dog and even when they start feeling better don't let them just eat a whole bunch of food right away ease them back into eating or else they're just going to keep throwing stuff up and that's going to re-dehydrate them and all of that fun stuff so you know these are really good things and also big thing here anytime you give your dogs any kind of tablets or caplets or anything a lot of vets say that it's okay to give your dog ibuprofen if they have like joint aches that's all fine and dandy but any pill that you give your dog cannot have coating no coating that means no gel caps either animals bodies cannot break down the coating around pills our bodies can, theirs cannot, and what it will do is it will coagulate and harden into a huge stone in their kidneys or their bladders, and it will cause huge issues. Trust me, my dog, a long time ago, my parents had a dog, and, you know, he was a family dog, it was a huge issue. 
like um, he had to have emergency surgery because they were giving him ibuprofen per the vet's recommendation, but they were giving him the ibuprofen with the orange coating on the outside, and it hardened into a bouncy ball sized uh, stone in his bladder, and his bladder ballooned to the size of a basketball. And this dog, I don't know how, I don't know how his bladder didn't rupture. It's a bad thing. So any pill that you get to try to give your dog, never get coating non-coated, always non-coated. And then last, um, the last thing, recommendation, you know, I tried using laundry detergent, um, OxyClean, and everything I could to try to get that smell and that stain out of the carpet. Um, and this is, this was my lifesaver. OxyClean, it's the Arm & Hammer Pet Stain and Odor Remover. This stuff, actually, it was like instantaneous. It was gone, and the smell was gone. Only thing that worked. I tried at least 10 other things. That is great. So hopefully this will help you. Hopefully, you know, you'll, you'll figure out a way to help your dog. You know, like I said, please, 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 if you think that your dog is too far gone, take it to the vet. Just tell them you'll make payments, but you want your dog to live. That's way more credit that you will get. And they will understand that you just want your dog to live. You know, don't ever just let it get to the point where it's too bad or just think, you know what, screw it, let the dog die. That's horrible. If you think that your dog's not going to make it, take him. Take him to the vet and figure out a way to make payments. You know, it, it will all work out. But don't leave them in a horrible, horrible state. So hopefully this helped you, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments or email me, and, you know, we'll figure something out. But hopefully, you know, you're watching this before things get too bad. Alright, have a good night.